Hello, Marlene and Bill here for the Human Ecology Project. You may have noticed that the main influence on social attitudes about nutrition are inspired by advertising, certainly not science or common sense. Often an opinion based on fragments of information become extremely popular. This is particularly true when some short-term goal seems achievable. This is also the case with some common mythologies regarding carbohydrate. Carbohydrates are the most common, sustainable and essential of the major nutrients. It's the fuel that we run on, it's the source of glucose which when converted to energy supports most body functions. They fuel the kidneys, the muscles of the heart, the nervous system and the brain. The recent fear of carbs is based on a poor understanding of the unique effects of different sources of the nutrients and their processing. What we want to do in this video is show why carbohydrates are essential, the importance of them in the human diet, and the dangers of trying to eliminate or dramatically reduce them in your diet. So, watch and enjoy. There are three essential nutrients called macronutrients. They're carbohydrates, protein, and fats. They're the ones that we need to consume in larger quantities. Each of them has a unique role to play in our well-being. Because they are acknowledged as central to a healthy diet, it's important to understand the considerations that come into play when deciding how to source these vital substances, since all three have abundant sources in the environment. Of the three macronutrients, carbohydrates are the primary source of energy. Glucose is the fuel for all the body's cellular functions, including the brain. The brain uses about 20% of the glucose we consume. Carbohydrates are the quickest, most efficient, and simplest macronutrient to break down and metabolize. We might wonder, then, why there's so much negative press about the dangers of so-called carbs. If they're so important, what's the problem? Well, let's put the conversation in context. Some of the confusion about carbohydrates is the definition. Carbohydrates all contain sugars that are the source of the energy used and stored in the body. These sugars come in several different forms that reflect their chemical structure, their source, and even the way that they may be processed. There are two broad categories we can use when defining carbohydrates. There are simple sugars and complex carbohydrates. The complex carbohydrates are created of long and complex chains of sugars together with other nutrients such as fibre, proteins, vitamins and minerals. They're found in whole grains, beans, root vegetables and tubers such as potatoes and sweet potatoes. You may have recognised the fact that these are the foods that have traditionally been the foundation of most human nutrition since before the agricultural revolution. The complex carbohydrate not only contains the sugars essential for our energy and repair, but they contain a natural balance of the all-important vitamins, minerals and fibre that nourish the gut biome, slow the digestion and provide a broad range of crucial nutrients. They don't cause a quick rise in blood sugar, but slowly make the energy available as needed. I refer to this like logs burning. This is an important and often overlooked consideration. The simple sugars are very different. The two main monosaccharides are fructose and glucose. They occur naturally in fruit and some vegetables and are present in processed sugars and other sweeteners such as agave, fructose, corn syrup or honey. These simple sugars may have very small amounts of other nutrients depending on origin and processing but all have the certain characteristics that can damage health. These problems arise from the speed of absorption, and I refer to that like paper burning. Simple sugars are absorbed quickly into the body and cause blood sugar levels to rise very quickly or spike. The simpler the sugar, the faster it's digested. These spikes in blood sugar drive up the insulin response. Rapid rises in blood sugar provoke the pancreas to produce insulin, a hormone that prompts cells to absorb the blood sugar for energy or storage. If the simple sugars are consumed on a regular basis with little demand for the excess energy, such as strenuous exercise, the fat is then stored as adipose tissue. This is often referred to as body fat and a main source of obesity. This is where the confusion, misunderstandings and mythologies around carbohydrate come from. It is the issue of weight gain that has consistently been the focus of the anti-carb brigade. 
The popularity of so-called low-carb diets raises its head with regularity every few decades. Recent iterations of this fad are the Atkins diet from the 1970s and then fast forward to the Zone diet in 1995, the South Beach diet in 2005, and any number of paleo and keto diets that shun or severely limit carbohydrate consumption. They all have extreme faults at their foundations that defy science, biology, and common sense. These theories are also a great example of how a simple and unquestioned truth can be twisted to create a damaging propaganda. There is absolutely no disputing the fact that consumption of refined carbohydrates, such as the simple sugars found in processed or refined foods like biscuits, cakes, soft drinks, supermarket bread, etc., have practically no nutritional value and cause chaos in your blood sugar levels. They rob the body of valuable nutrients. But they are not the same as the complex carbohydrates. The carbohydrate debate is entirely driven by the issue of weight loss. Certainly, extreme weight loss can be achieved by avoiding all carbohydrates. Low-carb diets prompt the body to produce its preferred fuel, glucose, in the liver and kidneys through the breakdown of fat and protein in a process called gluconeogenesis. Another low-carb metabolic strategy is ketosis, a state where the body adapts to fuel the brain and other organs by burning fat instead of glucose. These are emergency functions of the body. This is where the body starts using its fat and protein as an energy source. Ketosis will produce weight loss, but it will also damage the kidneys and the liver. It's not a sustainable or healthy way to nourish the body. These are extreme purging approaches to losing weight. They are not sustainable and pointless. A recent meta-analysis printed in Nutrients 2022 as follow-up to a massive study of the relation of diet and diabetes observed that, despite the high carbohydrate content of a vegan diet, all trials reviewed demonstrated glucose-lowering effects with more pronounced changes seen in participants adopting a conventional hypocaloric diet. This may be attributable to the higher fiber content. Dietary fiber reduces the response of glucose by processes, such as reducing gastric emptying and subsequent slowing of starch digestion and the glucose absorption. The complex carbohydrates, particularly the whole grains, are also sources of other nutrients, such as proteins, fats, minerals, and vitamins, as well as fiber. Fiber refers to classes of indigestible starches that are essential for your health. Fibre is correlated with many health benefits from improved digestion and a healthy, robust microbiome to better blood sugar regulation and healthy weight management. There are two forms of fibre, soluble and insoluble. Insoluble fibre doesn't dissolve in water. It remains mostly intact in your body and acts like a broom, cleaning out your digestive tract as it moves through it. Soluble fibre, on the other hand, does dissolve in water, forming a gel-like substance. Some of this gets absorbed and some provides a prebiotic that supports the growth of healthy bacteria in the intestines. All this should bring us to one of the most important aspects of the anti-carb argument. It's very important to be aware that the food industry strips away most of the valuable proteins, fibre, minerals and fats in the milling process that creates refined flour products such as white bread, white pastas, breakfast cereals and lots of other baked products. This milling degrades the nutritional value of the grains and makes them into simple sugars. This produces unprecedented confusion and deceit. And those whole grains and their products create the same problems as other simple sugars. It's been shown that it's the overconsumption of simple sugars that is one of the driving forces of the obesity epidemic. The growth of the fast food industry worldwide with the emphasis on high calories from simple sugars and fat is matched by the rising incidence of this terrible disease. In 2019, the global diabetes prevalence was estimated to be 9.3% and projected to rise to 11% by 2025. Half of the people who have the disease do not even know they have it. In America, the CDC reported in 2022 that over 11% of adults suffered with the problem. Obesity is believed to account for 80 to 85% of the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. 
while recent research suggests that obese people are up to 80 times more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. The relationship between these simple sugars and refined carbohydrates shows a direct link to overweight, obesity and diabetes. It's also a direct link to heart disease, inflammatory diseases and some cancers. The complete opposite is true with complex carbohydrates. Organisations as diverse as the World Health Organisation, the American National Institutes of Health, the British Medical Journal and Harvard University suggest that regular use of whole grains in the diet is not only healthy but protective. So whole grains are the historical gold standard for complex carbohydrates. According to a Cambridge University research review, epidemiological studies find that whole grain intake is protective against cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes and obesity. It's so easy to see that the mythologies regarding weight gain and carbohydrate consumption are related to the overconsumption of refined products. One needs to look no further than the cultures that rely on cereal grains as their main food to see the absurdity of the weight gain claim. For centuries, the human diet has relied heavily on complex carbohydrate foods such as grains, beans, root vegetables, tubers, seeds and fruits as their principal foods. Our bodies are even especially constructed to eat them. Scientists at Harvard University and the Max Planck Institute have studied the teeth of our ancestors going back 600,000 years. Both the markings on the teeth and the ancient bacterial traces confirm that the mainstay of the human diet was complex carbohydrates. The bacteria in the mouth of these Neanderthals were strikingly like modern humans, especially the presence of amylase. Now this enzyme is used to start the breakdown of complex sugars in the mouth. Humans have an exceptionally high concentration of this enzyme, a reflection of the importance of complex sugars in our diet. Our bodies are perfectly designed to eat carbohydrate. Aside from the amylase in our mouths and the obvious grinding surfaces of our molars, our GI tracts are designed to absorb carbohydrate. Every cell in our body is designed to run on carbohydrate. The complex starches in the human diet have been a major contributor to the development of the human brain. The efficiency of digesting and metabolizing complex carbohydrate is a key to our evolution and to our health. A healthy diet is one that uses the least amount of energy to digest and process. This means that there's more energy available for cell function and repair and what is referred to as executive function. Executive functions are high-order cognitive abilities, such as working memory, inhibitory control, cognitive flexibility, planning, reasoning, and problem-solving. A diet high in nutritional stress of excessive fats, refined carbohydrates, meat, and food additives puts a strain on both the body and the mind. By the time of the agricultural revolution placed it 10,000 years ago, the cereal grains had become synonymous with the beginning of human culture and agriculture. One of the main features of this radical shift in human life was the cultivation of cereal grains. They provided an efficient source of food energy for the smallest amount of land. The fact that they are also non-perishable, so can be stored efficiently for year-round use, made them essential part of the diet of all agricultural civilizations. Common sense should prompt us to ask why, after centuries of living in a diet Based on carbohydrate, we are seeing an epidemic of obesity and overweight. Why are the slenderest people in the world eating diets that include grains, beans, and roots as a foundation? You might be motivated to ask why. If all this is true, why have these low-carb diets become so popular? It's a great question and may require some uncomfortable answers. The decisions that most people make about diet are based on advertising, society, habit, or taste. These are all powerful motivations, but not a reflection of either science or common sense. Science is often called into play with advertising, but the science is invariably cherry-picked or sponsored by those with a vested interest. Independent and comprehensive studies or epidemiological reports are often ignored. There are lessons that need to be learned here. It is not only the issue of carbs, but the fact that our nutritional needs are not as difficult as often presented. Confusion generates alternative realities. 
Confusion stimulates artificial needs, and most importantly, confusion sells products. Both orthodox and so-called alternative approaches to healthy nutrition find it difficult to accept one simple fact. Science, history, and ancient wisdom all show that the best human diet is one that's based on ecological principles that have not changed in centuries. The greatest challenge we face in adopting a sustainable and healthy diet is accepting that simple food, well cooked and eaten with respect, will always be better than the fads, the supplements, the exotic medical foods and smoothies that are now so popular. Here we are back again. It's so important that we understand the foods we eat, the importance of them in a healthy diet, and the impact those foods have on society and on the environment. Often the messages we get about our food are driven by ideas that don't withstand the test of time, tradition or the science. We all need to be mindful and cut through the popular fads and search for the truth. If you would like more information, please go to our website and download our free ebook, The Human Ecology Diet. We think you'll enjoy it. That's all for now. Be well. See you the next time.